In this lecture, we're going to take advantage of the vocabulary you learned in the normal intrapartum events lecture. We're going to move into what happens when things go wrong, abnormal intrapartum events. We're going to focus on what happens when things take too long or things stop. You need to know when to go to surgery and when you can simply augment with medications. We're going to begin considering three things, power, the passenger, and the pelvis. You can't change mom and mom's anatomy that well. You can't change the size of baby. The only thing we can actively augment is the power of her contractions using Pitocin. Power with Pitocin. That is oxytocin. Let's start with prolonged latent phase. Recall that the latent phase occurs from the onset of contractions until the cervix is dilated to four centimeters. It normally takes about 20 hours for a preemie and 14 hours for a multiparous woman. If it takes longer than that, you're in prolonged latent phase. We just talked about passenger power and pelvis, but for prolonged latent phase, the problem is usually not the three Ps, but iatrogenic. We do it to mom. We do it by giving analgesics too soon during labor. And this is going to be a common question you'll see. If it's your fault, you don't need to do anything but wait out the analgesics. But don't forget about the power, the passenger, and the pelvis. This is a common theme throughout all of these diseases. And so if a woman has had prolonged latent phase that has taken too long, we have to first ask, is there an issue with her contractions? So we're going to place an intrauterine pressure catheter and determine the rate, that is the frequency of her contractions, as well as the power. In order to be adequate, contractions should be greater than 40 millimeters of mercury and occur at least three times in 30 minutes. If the patient has inadequate contractions, that is they're not powerful enough or they're not frequent enough, we can augment her. If we go after augmentation and her contractions are sufficient, we're only going to get into the side effects of Pitocin, such as uterine rupture or uterine inversion. So to treat prolonged latent phase, if it was our fault and we gave her analgesics, we just have her rest and wait. Our bad. If she has trouble getting going, that is, there's very little cervical change despite long hours of the latent phase, what we can do is insert a balloon into her uterus, inflate it, and then under pressure, sort of pull back. And that balloon will simulate head engagement and stimulate the cervix to dilate. If that fails, likely we're going to C-section because she's having contractions but nothing's happening, we've got to get baby out. And of course, if she has inadequate contractions, we can always try to augment her power with Pitocin. That is for prolonged latent phase. Let's now talk about prolonged or arrested active phase. Active phase begins at cervical dilation of four centimeters and continues until maximal dilation of 10 centimeters. It normally occurs at a rate of 1.2 centimeters per hour for a primiparis and 1.5 centimeters per hour for a multiparis. If it takes longer than that, she's either in a prolonged or arrested active phase. This is almost always power, pelvis, and passenger. Analgesics usually do not interfere with active phase and are okay to give because the contractions frequency and force usually increase, which means mom feels more pain. You're going to diagnose the adequacy of her contractions. You're looking for two to three contractions every 30 minutes and a power greater than 40 millimeters of mercury. Same thing as before. But now you're also going to assess how fast she is opening up. If she has cervical dilation, cervical changes that are simply slowed, she's prolonged. 
If she has no cervical change at all, she is arrested. At this point, we have very limited options for her. The balloon's already in place. We're already trying to help her through. That's not going to get you moving through the active phase. If it's an issue with her contractions, we can try Pitocin. But ultimately, if she's had an arrest of her active phase, she's going to need a C-section. The cervix isn't open yet, baby hasn't moved into the vagina, and the only OB operation you can do is a C-section. Let's do a little diagram to kind of help you understand prolonged, latent, and active phase. So moms come in and there are contractions. But cervical dilation is taking longer than it should. The first thing you should do is assess the quality of her contractions. Do that with an IUPC. If the contractions are inadequate, the problem that caused her to go into delay, that caused her stage to arrest, that caused her stage to prolong, is probably the power of her contractions. And so you will give Pitocin, oxytocin and reassess in two hours. If after initiation to Pitocin she has resumed her vaginal delivery, you simply continue. You have spared her a C-section. But if in the beginning contractions were adequate, or after two hours of Pitocin, there's been no change, there's not really any options left. Baby's got to come out, perform a C-section. This is for stage one, prolonged latent phase, and prolonged active phase. Let's move into when baby actually starts to engage and come down the vaginal canal. What happens with prolonged second stage? Remember, the second stage is defined by maximal cervical dilation until baby gets delivered. This should take about three hours if you've got an epidural in, and two hours if there is no epidural. Remembering that epidural is very good for controlling her pain, but she also can't feel contractions, so she needs a tocometer and someone coaching her and telling her when to push. Thus, it's going to take a little bit longer for her to get baby out using an epidural. We're always going to consider the power, the pelvis, and the passenger. But at this point, after maximal cervical dilation, chances are it's no longer a power issue. It's probably the pelvis or the passenger. And that is you can't fit a 12 centimeter baby through a 10 centimeter hole. You can't fit the 12 centimeter baby through an 8 centimeter tube. So if there is problems with prolonged second stage, it's probably going to be with the pelvis or the passenger. But the only thing we can do is assess her contractions. So the contraction frequency and power is assessed. Just as we had done previously. And because the only thing we can augment is her power, we can try Pitocin. That is, if the contractions are infrequent and not powerful. But ultimately, if it's the pelvis or passenger, we're either going to have to assist baby or get it out somehow. So, if you are at station one or two, that is plus one or plus two, you're so close to the end, you just can't get baby good to go all the way. Now you're going to go into the vagina and help it come out. Do that with a vacuum device or forceps. On the other hand, if your station zero or less, that is far from the vaginal opening, you cannot use vacuum or forceps. You'll have to go to C-section. So I want to see, show you how similar this is to what you just learned previously by going through another diagram. That is, delivery is taking longer than it should.
when you compare these two, you're going to see how very similar the thought process is. The first thing you're going to do is assess contractions. If contractions are inadequate, you attempt Pitocin and reassess in two hours. If baby has come out, great, continue the vaginal delivery as normal. Essentially identical to the algorithm we just went through. But here's how this one's going to change a little bit. If there is a failure of Pitocin or the contractions were originally adequate, now you know baby needs to come out, but you have to ask a question. What is the fetal station? Because if it is near the vaginal opening, you're going to still do an OB operation, but you're going to use either a vacuum or forceps. But if it's far from the vaginal opening, you're going to do the OB operation that we most commonly do, C-section. For prolonged third stage of delivery, that is the placenta won't come out. you know that the placenta is soft and squishy. A baby has just made it through her pelvis. So you know that her pelvis is big enough to accommodate the placenta. You also know that the placenta is not gonna get obstructed. The only issue with prolonged third stage is power. And either we just put her through huge doses of Pitocin or she's had a prolonged delivery and so the uterus is just tired and can't get that placenta out. And so third stage is from baby being delivered to delivery of the placenta. The only issue is power. And so you don't have to do anything to diagnose it. You know that the issue is just that the uterus is tired. So what you do, you can initially think Pitocin, right, which is what we want to augment power. But that's actually one of the farthest steps down. What we do instead is uterine massage. You can actually do external or internal uterine massage to actually try to help the uterus contract a little bit better. That stimulation will help the uterus contract and get the placenta out. If massage doesn't work, you can try Pitocin. Now remember, the Pitocin probably tired out the uterus to begin with, so increased doses may be required. And ultimately what you can do is manual manipulation. Turn off the Pitocin, reach your hand in, grab the placenta, and help it come out. Also recognize that a prolonged third stage is a high risk of converting to postpartum hemorrhage because if the, the, the uterus is too weak to push out the placenta, it may be too weak to kind of calm down and stop any postpartum bleeding from the uterus itself. All right, so in the last lecture, we learned some vocabulary. In this lecture, we learned what happens when things go wrong. Hopefully you detected a regular theme. You're always gonna assess contraction frequency and power. The only thing that we can adjust is the power. Use Pitocin. If it's any other issue, it's going to have to be a surgical intervention to get baby out. You cannot let any one phase of delivery go on for too long. It puts baby at risk and you need that baby out. That is abnormal intrapartum events. We make these videos for free and we need your help. Please donate because without your donations, we can't make any more videos. Please donate.